This is gonna be fun. I brought my book. Oh. <laughs> Deb, come and join us. I just, I just wanna, you know. No, I don't. I don't want. Deb, you can no. sit up here. You're not gonna hurt a thing. Please okay. join us. It's not gonna hurt anything. Okay, you're on. Mm -hmm. Good evening. Welcome to the 11th Spotlight Series for the St. Genevieve Museum Learning Center. My name is Jan Loida, and I'm the Director of Education for the Museum Learning Center. And we have with us tonight Bob Wolk, who is the chairman of our organization. We have with us Larry Braun, who is going to be talking to us about specialized birdhouses. He is a digital artist that has turn birdhouses into collective items for the community. And then we also have Greg Wolk, who is a historian with special interest with the Civil War. And we're going to have a long conversation with Greg tonight as well. So welcome. And Debbie is also, she's with us tonight and she's going to be enjoying this conversation and, and adding her and here for support and here for support okay here Marital for support, support. And, we're just gonna have, gonna add and we're gonna have a good time tonight so actually i'm going to start because i've had a long lot of conversation already with um larry about his birdhouses we're going to start there and i'm going to let you take over larry and talk about gosh your specialty and what's become your art if we could sure but the reason we're doing this is because we have Christmas season of oh, us. absolutely. And we want, to, we want people in the community to know what we have available in our gift shop at the museum. Is that correct? That is absolutely correct. Okay. We are going to be talking about other items. And later Larry on. and Greg are big yeah. parts of this, so we'd like to have them. So, Larry, you're on board. So, Merry okay. Christmas, and here we go. We got some <laughs> gift items yeah. for you, right? Right. Uh, well, to give you a little background on myself, I, I started out doing photography, landscape photography, and uh, you know, going on hikes. I love to hike. So going on hikes and taking photos, and, and I made some really good photos, but there's a lot of other people taking really good landscape photos as well, so it's a really tough market to, to go into. So the January of this year, I, I decided I was going to have to do something, maybe a little different. Uh, to make things work for me. And so I came up with some different ideas. Uh, the garden show in May, I'm part of the St. Jimmy Art Guild, and we have a, every May we have a garden show where we try to, to have pictures and paintings and photographs of the garden area of town. And so I was asked to bring a 3D. <laughs> item and which of course everything I'd done before that was 2D just photo so I got to thinking and I come up with this idea to get a birdhouse now this is a standard unfinished birdhouse and I buy them at Hobby Lobby oh. <laughs> and I can buy as many as I want <laughs> and so I don't I'm not a carpenter I don't pretend to be and I didn't try to figure out how to make a birdhouse. I went and bought one. You didn't have to admit to that, Larry. You could have taken full credit <laughs> no, for that here. No, I don't anything. want people calling me saying, we'd like you to build me a birdhouse. <laughs> I don't know how to build birdhouses. So. Okay. But, no. So I buy these already made Hobby Lobby. And so my first attempt looked like this. It was just a random house that I had a picture of. And I had to, I had to what I call morph is morph is where you take part of the picture and copy it to another part of the picture mm -hmm. so it only had the front of the of the house so i had to morph the rest of the house from that one image and i came up with this and uh, some people really liked it and, and one of the artists at the art guild said well can you do the rosier building mm -hmm. so i went down to looked at that and and i made one of those and i made actually i made about three different uh, houses in town and made them into bird houses and I took them to the next art guild meeting and we passed them around and before they went all the way around they were sold people wanted them and I would just brought them to pass around so I figured I got something here that uh, is really interesting so the next step was I uh, yeah that was my very first house that's an uno uno <laughs> so I made that and 
then after, and then I, I started focusing on, on the historic structures in St. Genevieve, because uh, where in Missouri can you find such a rich collection of historic uh, buildings? And I thought, well, these, these may, and people are interested, and people come here, and they want to take souvenirs home with them of this community, and what a, what a unique offering to show them uh, a historic structure in a birdhouse. And they're fairly, you know, reasonably purchased price so that anybody that wants one can you know, afford one. Mm -hmm. So that was, and then uh, in June I had my own showing at the St. Genevieve Winery. Every, every month a different artist is a focus artist, and June was my month for the uh, St. Genevieve Gallery. And mm -hmm. so I took some pictures, but I took quite a few birdhouses as well, and I sold all my birdhouses. <laughs> I didn't sell but a couple of paintings or pictures, but I sold all the birdhouses. So I thought, well, these things, and, and I met uh, Colby from the Herald, and he wanted to start selling these uh, in the Herald. Mm -hmm. And so I made some for him. I made uh, the Rosier store, the the old brick house, what they called the L&L Lock Shop, which was down on Market Street. It used to be called Square Donuts. Yes. Yeah. I did that one, and I have this log cabin on St. Mary's Road called the La Source Durant House. So he, he put those in the paper and advertised them. And, and so I got, the word got around that these are available. So I guess the next step then is I started making different uh, different kinds. Other than that, this is the the Francis Francois Valley Two House, and these are in addition to what's in the Herald. That is not sold anywhere right now. Uh, the DNR ladies at the DNR. Got interested in this stuff, and uh, Donna Roche asked me if I could do the Felix Valley, the Shaw House, the Amaral House, mm -hmm. and there's one other one. That one looks like the Amaral House. Right yeah. What's that? When I look at that up on the screen, it looks 3D because yeah. of the way yeah. your photography is. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's really beautiful, mm -hmm. and it's really the photographs that are kind of glued onto the birdhouse, but it's that really house there is owned by the Colonial Dames, yeah, the original. Yeah, that's really nice. Okay, and then I also had what they called the MacArthur House or the Raid House. This is the one that was almost, had fallen down mm -hmm. and it had a, a yard full of old cars in the front. Oh, and I remember, sure. A gentleman went there and restored that and it looks, it's a beautiful house today. So I thought that would be excellent. Hmm. And about uh, about two months ago, Stephanie called Stephanie Goodell from the from the uh, Museum, museum and mm -hmm. Learning Center, and she had saw I had made the museum into a birdhouse. Oh wow! And she called and asked if if I still had it, and I said yes. She said, "Well, we want it," and then she wanted. I think we sold three or four right off the bat as mm -hmm. soon as she got them. And then I, I made some more. Now, I think they have three, they have three of them in stock right now. Mm -hmm. They did have four. They sold one over the weekend. Mm -hmm. and, and we will keep those in stock. And they're the only place that you can buy the, the museum birdhouse is at the museum itself. And, and I try to, the only place I sell the ones that DNR are selling is there. I give them, whoever sells them, exclusive rights to that. Uh, the Herald, therefore, the only place you can get those is at the Herald. Like if you would call me, say, I'd like this house, well, I'd say, well, go see Kobe at the Herald or go see the DNR. So, Larry, help me to clarify this for the viewers. So, at the Herald, can they purchase any of these homes, or you have just the ones, the ones that they have available? Okay, the ones that they have available. But if they go and visit some of the homes that you have, 
particularly um, you know viewed for that verb house and those are going to be sold at those spe specific sites could be i mean right. uh i haven't it been doing for this the real long yeah you know, okay. i've got a long way to go as far as to maximize my marketing okay but i would like to, to do one for all of the colonial dames houses if they if they would be interested in selling those. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I already done the DNR, the same ar arrangement, and then the museum here, the Learning Center. Uh, and we may come up, as we as the Learning Center uh, expands, we may come up with some different ideas for bird houses, which I will make and we'll only sell there. Absolutely. So this is actually all four sides of our museum buildings, yes. which we will be moving out of, but we're very proud of this building. Mm -hmm. So we're uh, overjoyed to have that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on that uh, birdhouse. So it's a keepsake as well as anything else. So we're very happy to have that. Larry, you've got something else sitting behind you. What is that? Yeah. Another item that I make that sell at the museum is the, I, I do a, a type of photography. Why, well, the first of all, I, I, my photography uses a, a technique called HDR, high dynamic range. And what I do is when I photograph a structure, I take three photos. I take one overexposed, one underexposed, and one with the correct exposure. And I have a program that will take uh, all these three different exposures and make the best image. Hmm. For instance, when you take a picture of the sky, it's usually overexposed. Or if it is, is if it's not overexposed, then you have dark <laughs> shadows. Mm -hmm. So what it does is it allows you to have detail in the shadows and the sky and the overexposed. So that's how I start with the image. And then I take all four sides of the image. So let's get back here. I'm sorry. I'm, but that's fine. Yeah. Go ahead. So, so, and then the second thing I do, once I process this photo, uh, I put it in a setting. Well, I mean, the, this is the original setting. I add a texture to it. And a texture is just uh, like a picture of the sky, picture of bricks, sand, picture of anything that you think the texture is interesting. Uh, I think the texture I use here was actually a frozen lake. <laughs> and the ice you know, as it starts to thaw, has all these little cracks and air bubbles and stuff in it, just marvelous texture. Mm -hmm. So I take that texture and lay it on top of the, of the image. Mm -hmm. And then the, the way you blend these two images together, they interact. And so you can see the sky it has, you know, it doesn't look like just the sky, it's got texture in the mm -hmm. sky. But now when I get to the building, I completely remove the texture. You don't want the texture on the building. You want to just see the building itself and not be obstructed by a texture. Now some people, and that's the way I, my texture is different than what I've studied, is they texturize the whole thing. Well, my, my innovation was to just to bring the, some items out of this photo like a painter would. A painter wouldn't include everything. Sure. You know, he would, he or she would leave things out that they, they well, didn't think was, like phone, phone lines. lines. You know, right. you won't see phone lines in my photos. I take them out. Mm -hmm. uh, in this case, you don't see the uh, flags in front of the museum. Right, mm -hmm. they're gone. So that is physically a picture of our museum, current museum, mm -hmm. with the St. Genevieve Church in the background. I, I did think the church was an interesting background. I think it absolutely is. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, brought, I didn't bring it fully out. It doesn't have the, the clarity or the intensity of the, the museum, because that's the main subject. Yes. But it's there mm -hmm. in the background, and you get a feel, a sense for where this photo is in, you know, in the real world. Mm -hmm. so, and so I, I've taken this procedure. And uh, I photographed all 45 structures that will be in the National Park it, when it's included. And this comes out of the study that they did. And in that study, you'll see a list of 45 structures that, will, uh, that they feel will be is significant to 
add to the national park. And so, uh, about this over here, give you some uh, examples of some that I've done. Uh, Here's the Amaral House. This is currently owned by the DNR, I believe. And, and, and on, on, on each label, I indicate, like, this is property inventory number seven. And when you open that book and you go to number seven, that's the Amaral House. <laughs> and then uh, this is Francis Valley's two house. You can't hardly see it because the card's in the way. <laughs> We'll move on. Something. There we go. This is Moses out, uh, Moses Austin's outbuilding number one. Mm -hmm. See, I, and I add texture. I add a different texture to almost every one because I have about oh maybe 50 texture file, mm -hmm. and so I pick the texture that I feel works best with the lighting conditions mm -hmm. of that photo. So that's where my art comes in. Is what texture do I want to add? What things do I leave in the photo? What things do I take out? And that's, that's my art, you know, mm -hmm. my expression, what I think is important. Uh, here's the August. Now, my French is not real good, so I may pronounce. <laughs> I may mispronounce. It's a Achebon. Aubuchon. Aubuchon. Aubuchon, yeah. That's Aubuchon. German. Yes. Oh, it's actually, well, <laughs> you'd think my German would be better <laughs> since I have a German heritage. So what are you, are you trying to restore what it used to look like? Huh? Are you removing things that modernize it and you want to take it back to what it yeah, originally I, looked like? Well, the, the main thing I really take out is phone lines and right. electric lines. So right, that's what Poles. I'm thinking. Looking uh, at your photos, that's what I see. Yeah, you won't see any cars parked along the roads. Sure. Uh, I do bring in, you know, like I've got the street, street that you can, you know, you can, I want a feel for the, I don't just take a picture of the building. I like a feel for where this is in the community, you know, and so I do include uh, streets when I can, mm -hmm. when I find that that is interesting. <laughs> so. Right. This is the uh, Charles Lehay house, and this one's for sale as a matter of fact. Am I blocking that? No, okay. you're, you're okay. Correct. I know I got these birdhouses in the way. No, you're good. Okay, mm -hmm. we're good. This is this is owned by Bonnie Samuelson. Uh, and this is the Francis Bernier house. This so all the, of these houses you have photographed, they're not in birdhouses, they're not in the photos not yet. yet, but you are working towards that, right? I, I, well, what I do, of course, like, well, yesterday a lady calls, her, her mom worked at the county courthouse, and so she asked if I would do one of that. So yeah. this afternoon I took pictures of the courthouse, and I will make that. I guess right now I'm staying busy enough fulfilling people's requests that I'm not actually going out on my own and picking places because I've, I'm just so busy taking care of these requests. But eventually I hope that people will ask for these other houses and sure. I'll go I'll go do it well then what we are looking at is what we have in our gift shop at the museum mm -hmm. so that will be this item right we, we are exclusive for that item will be absolutely at, what about the photo is that exclusive yes. to the museum also mm -hmm. so anyone that would like to purchase either one of those two items they'll be available at the museum right for sale in our gift shop. So we can sell multiple different types of birdhouses there, right? Is what you're telling me. Yeah, if uh, if they ask. Right. But I think this is the only one that they'll sell exclusively. Yes. Exclusively but if, there, but then can right. we but order if they some wanted, of the others? If they want in others that I don't, like the four that the DNR sell, I won't sell down right. there. Right, but then yeah. some of the others that don't but have a place like of sale. Like this one here, it, it's available because I... I am not selling this anywhere else. Okay, great. That's what I wanted to clarify. So, and if someone has a building that they want to have photographed and turned into a birdhouse, would you be willing to do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like I orders. said, the lady called me. Right. And so I went and took a picture of it. But I, one of the reasons I wanted to do the courthouse because I, uh, I think it'll be a very popular. In fact, while I was taking pictures of the back of the courthouse, this lady that 
I was there about quitting time. People were leaving the courthouse. She said, what are you doing? <laughs> I said, I'm taking pictures of the back. She said, well, why on earth do you want to? And then I explained that I make birdhouses. Oh, yeah, I know. And she was familiar with me. And she said, I want one of those. <laughs> so I think there'll be a market there for the, the courthouse birdhouse. Mm -hmm. uh, Basically, yeah. what I'm hearing, Larry, is if they got money and they got a photo that they want on a birdhouse, they can have it. Really? And they don't need a lot of money. <laughs> the, I'm selling these very reasonable. Okay, you know, great. $20. Like twenty dollars, I think they can go to the museum museum and buy one of these. That okay. they're pretty reasonable. But now, if somebody wants me to do a I custom want that one, museum one tonight. <laughs> yeah. it, it, uh -oh. <laughs> you sold the museum one. Look well, I want the museum well, one you did. tonight. Because I took this out of the out of the museum. Yes. Because I didn't have any, and uh, I wanted to have one. Be sure I had one I, here. I'm glad you did. And so, All right, Larry, there you go. Well, you just take no, that. Just that's really yours. Little, little yeah, transaction. Yeah, the, I'll, I'll hold this you for you no, that's yours. later. No, that's yours. Okay. Because yeah. I've already sold it to you. Okay. <laughs> there you go, Jan. That, I mean, You're that's in business. where we all started, right? <laughs> that's <Robert>? exactly right. <laughs> now, the next one I want is the Ketting Building. So you work on that one. You may want to wait until we re get finished <laughs> yeah. doing the outside, the restoration on it. But it I, will I be do very have a, a picture of looking down Third Street, no market, of the Ketting, with the lights on. With the Ketting okay, sign lit up. Yeah, and the, the in a, in a uh, texture. Mm -hmm. so, anyway, so I got all 45 of them, if anybody's interested. I just had a showing at the Welcome Center here in town. Uh -huh. It lasted for the month of November. And so I had all these up, people to see. <laughs> And I sold, so I sold, so mostly five by more five by sevens than anything, because they put them in a nice frame like that. Right. And uh, they're really, these are my most popular product, even more so than the birdhouse. I got them. that one, Jim. <laughs> now I had another. We talked one about there. how my mother loved birds, right? <laughs> yeah. We talked about that before the show, and you're competing with my grandchildren in photo albums or like photo frame so I love that that's really good see you may have a birdhouse with all her grandchildren on <laughs> hey. that's what I'm here I have so many birds to put around this is going to be perfect I, I'm telling you I was talking to uh, Terry Cavins about yeah. maybe making taking her photos of you know she she uh, she paints uh, pets mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. Oh, that would be cool. What that if you made, house. what if you cut this little stem off <laughs> and made a dog and covered house? this hole up <laughs> and made a little thing and put one of her pictures of one of her dogs? Oh, you know, take a picture of it. You have a whole new. Put, yeah. I mean, project. there's a lot of people. Pets are big. Oh, yeah. Most of these things are, don't have a wide market for the individual things, but mm -hmm. person, mm -hmm. I mean, she could offer it as maybe a, uh, an option mm -hmm. or, sure. or something. I don't know. I'm just I'm just brainstorming another avenue. But I, well, I tell you the truth, I'm staying pretty busy. <laughs> just uh, That's keeping fantastic. up with this. It's, it's, we love it. We love the museum. I think the I know. one That's you made it a museum one of my best. Is a, yeah. It came out really well. That's the lighting. A I know it's really yeah. pretty. It's really nice. So like I say, the lighting. Uh, that one there was done after sunset. Mm -hmm. and, and that's really the best time to, mm -hmm. to uh, the, the best lighting, because you don't want shadows. Mm -hmm. This has shadows. That's what happens when you, when you shoot one during the daytime. And it, the only way you can avoid that is wait for the sun to go down, and you have that twinkle of the twilight that kind of glows, mm -hmm. and that would be a good... Well, we're very happy with the way the museum turned out. Mm -hmm. yeah. And again, we're proud of that museum building. Uh, mm -hmm. We're sorry we can't stay there. It just does not uh, address what we need at this point. But we're very proud of that museum building. And I think a lot of people in town will want that keepsake. So it's available sure. at our museum gift shop. Right, Absolutely. Jen? Absolutely. Yep, it is. And okay. we'll look forward to having a new one made when we expand to the yeah, well, got, she's only sure. has I think two left now so <laughs> you may have yeah, to, you keep working on making order some more of order. these we want the yes. old and the new it's all going to be a continuum so that's yes. good 
Well, thank you, Larry, for being here. And I was delighted to hear about all of this. It was great. So, and hopefully we can promote your items in the future as you kind of show yeah. St. Genevieve history. I, I know. Because we're I've, all about the history of St. Genevieve. I've Googled uh, this process of trying to see who, what, who else is doing these. Nobody's doing anything no, like this. No, I think aware. this is pretty unique. In Google, you know, you, mm -hmm. there may be somebody out there doing it, but it, I couldn't find it. <laughs> you know, it's pretty, it's an idea that kind of evolved with my affiliation with the Yard Guild. Well, thank you so much for joining us tonight. I really appreciate it. We're going to shift gears and we're going to talk with Greg tonight. Greg Wilk, who is a historian on Civil War era. I am not trained as a historian. I'm an uh, avocational historian, I think. So it's kind of your love. What brings yes. you to that love? What brought you to that interest? The story starts in 1924. Are you sure you want to hear the whole thing? I do. Do you want to hear it, Robert? I do. I want to hear it. I want to get to know you. My mother was born in 1924 in Pilot Knob, Missouri. And as a young person, I would go down there. In fact, one of my last memories of the place was taking the old Missouri Pacific train down and having it break down on the way to Pilot Knob from St. Louis. Uh -huh. I'm a native St. Louisan. Mm -hmm. People may be wondering about why I seem to share a name with this gentleman over here. Are you really? Which is a privilege, yes. by the way. Oh, yes. I want to know if you really and are. And vice versa. So what is the connection? I want to know. Just a side shoot. I'll, right? I'll let Greg okay. go ahead. He's on stage, so let's let him tell us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on stage every day. Okay. Yeah. Um, we both understand our family history. I've known for many, many years that my family came from St. Genevieve originally, mm -hmm. but my great-great-grandfather moved to St. Louis in about 1900 okay. from St. Genevieve. Mm -hmm. And his father and Bob's great-great-grandfather, no, I'm sorry, my great-great-grandfather and his great-great-grandfather were brothers who came here from Germany in about 1850 uh, with their father who passed away soon after they arrived. Mm -hmm. And Bob's um, uh, forefather was named Philip, and mine was named Remigius, which is the German version of Raymond. So somehow, uh, well, thanks to my wife Debbie here, who knows a lot of people, there you go. we came to a wedding in St. Genevieve County and wound up finding out that half the people there were named Wolk. <laughs> so it was a bit of a surprise to us as well. So I'm, I, frankly, one of the highlights of the last decade of my life, and this is probably the last decade of my life, oh, no. <laughs> is uh, meeting Bob and getting in touch with my roots in St. Genevieve. That's great. And where are you from originally? I was born in Waynesville, Missouri, but lived in St. Louis all my life. So you're not far from St. Genevieve? No, no, no. No, it's an hour. That's all it is. And you guys haven't met before now? Until the wedding. Until the wedding. And when was and, the wedding? And I got, they got, he got, we got to come to the wedding because I, the man that I worked with, I was teaching the man that I worked with, his daughter was getting married to a guy in St. Genevieve, in St. Genevieve, and we came to the wedding, and everybody on the program's name was a wolk, and it felt really scary to be with all these wolks. And Greg just went over and like, hi, I'm, hi cousin, I'm Greg, and oh, whatever, and we found out we're all, they're all related. That's like awesome. an alternative universe. It was. It was. I'm home, yeah. right? <laughs> um, but in any case, um, because and people from Missouri, I think, realize, and they should, that the Battle of Pilot Knob and the State Historic Site over there is just one of the premier things that we have to offer for uh, heritage tourism. And that's, that's really what my job is, is heritage tourism. Mm -hmm. okay. So um, I, like many people who are very interested in the Civil War, uh, they are called Civil War nuts, incidentally. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something that sparks an interest, and mm -hmm. I'm quite sure that uh, mm -hmm. visiting uh, Pilot Knob as a young child and meeting some of my mother's friends who were, well, more like um, Huckleberry Finn, perhaps, <laughs> than I was. Uh, left an impression on me that 
just sort of regenerated when I got older. So, um, so Greg brings something to our museum. Because Greg has, if Greg, you'll hold up your book for us, please. Greg has authored this book. Friend and Foe Alike, a tour guide to Missouri Civil War. And we have this available in our gift shop, Jan, okay. at the museum. And uh, we sell that book. So, Greg, if you'll give us the history on the book and how it came to be. It's a fascinating book, I might say. Well, thank you. But tell us what's in it. So people who would be interested in purchasing that as a gift for Christmas, what are they going to find in there? And it is an excellent gift for Christmas, I might say. Um, this uh, book, it's uh, 262 pages, and it covers about 235 Civil War sites all across the state of Missouri. And it is a result of, um, well, uh, step back just a little bit. Um, I, with a, uh, several other people, and half a dozen other people back in 2001, uh, were involved in creating something called Missouri Civil War Heritage Foundation. And uh, we created it. It grew out of a uh, committee of the Missouri Tourism Commission and we created it in order to make sure that Missouri was ready for the sesquicentennial of the Civil War. Uh, the most important consequence of the sesquicentennial of the Civil War is that I learned to pronounce it. That was big. <laughs> yes. That is big. And, and now that's a um, skill that's of no longer of any use. <laughs> but in any case, um, I'll just say that Personally, I became a little bit disturbed because Missouri wasn't preparing itself for the uh, commemoration of that event. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, uh, I had, in my travels that I was making already on behalf of the uh, Civil War Heritage Foundation, I began to keep notes. And most importantly, I met people, and my wife, uh, Debbie, went on many, many of these trips. and. Uh, I met so many interesting people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just can't hardly describe them. Mm -hmm. But almost everywhere we went, and I might say, uh, the book has five tour loops, it's called. If the reader wants to get in the car and take a drive, uh, I would say the average one of them is about four or 500 miles. Mm -hmm. And if you wanted to drive the entire book worth, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I think it's about 3,500 miles. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's all in Missouri. All in Missouri. Oh, man. Uh, but there, a lot of people don't realize. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, behind Virginia and Tennessee, the state that had the most battles or engagements in the Civil War was, in fact, Missouri. But I might say that over the years, and for reasons uh, that perhaps are understandable, uh, while Virginia has been making um, much in terms of their economic uh, benefits of tourism, and the same as Tennessee, we in Missouri just don't toot our horn, mm -hmm. if that's the right term. And, and I, I don't want to make light of it. Of course, this was a terrible event in the country's history and in Missouri's history, but it is an event that almost anybody who loves history and or love genealogy, frankly, uh, finds fascinating. And Greg, when I read through this book, I, the interesting thing about the book is you have routes that you can follow and take a specific route and go to each town and know what events took place. But in addition to that, you tell stories in there like about the gray fox. So uh, tell us a little bit about the gray fox because that story is in there. And I was fascinated by it, but I had never heard that, so. <coughs> uh, you, the uh, Swamp Fox. Perhaps. Okay. Um, well, here, and if, if the camera will pick this up, let me show you something else that we, I mean, the Civil War Heritage Foundation, and lest I forget, the um, uh, Missouri Humanities Council also have mm -hmm. collaborated on to get uh, the tourism aspects of Missouri Civil War uh, out to the public. And, mm -hmm. and the idea is not just Missouri public, but all the places in Illinois and Iowa and Nebraska, Indiana, you name it, 
where actually the men who fought for regiments from those states fought in Missouri. But uh, M. Jeff Thompson uh, is the, the fellow, I think here he is right here, um, and it is one of my favorite subjects, but um, I will, on that invitation, engage in a little bit of, um, well, fun, let me say, with M. Jeff Thompson. Um, Meriwether Jefferson Thompson was his name, and it, you shouldn't be surprised if he came from Virginia, which he did, mm -hmm. but in the 1850s he moved to St. Joseph, Missouri, and before the Civil War, um, what distinguished him more than anything else is that he was the mayor of St. Joseph, and he was the person who handed off the first package or packet of mail to the Pony Express rider. Having a Southern heritage, when the Civil War started ramping up, uh, he joined what was called the Missouri State Guard, mm -hmm. which was a state-sanctioned, more than a militia, but a state-sanctioned army uh, uh, that was a Southern uh, leading army. Now, I would hesitate to call them certainly Confederates, and I would hesitate to call them secessionists, because um, in Missouri, people even of Southern uh, heritage really did want to stay in the Union. Mm -hmm. um, but in any case, uh, M. Jeff Thompson, um, what you see in this map is something that the Missouri Humanities Council has put together mm -hmm. called the U.S. Grant Trail. Mm -hmm. And M. Jeff Thompson was the first nemesis of Ulysses Grant during Ulysses Grant's career in the Civil War. Mm -hmm. And um, where they battled it out, as it were, was down in southeast Missouri. And the reason that M. Jeff Thompson became ever, forever known as the Missouri Swamp Fox is that he drove Grant crazy down in the, <laughs> the boot heel That's for the first uh, few months of the war. So those stories are in this book. That there, it's not just a road map. There's actual history and stories such as that in this book. I, I, I started the conversation by making sure that people realize I was not a PhD in history. I, I received my doctorate, as it were, in the legal profession. Uh, but um, in terms of uh, my own feeling, uh, what we, we have, there is a danger that we will lose our history but even uh, perhaps a greater danger that we're going to lose um, the, um, the stories. I've made every effort to make sure that the stories are accurate, um, but to me, uh, if we lost the stories uh, because not every one of them could be documented, then we've lost something almost as valuable as history itself. So that's, that was the intent of the, of the book, actually. I agree. So we have that book, Jan, at mm -hmm. the... So Greg, how much is that book at this gift store? $28.95. Okay, so my oh, dad would love that. So we have to figure out how I can... I'm doing Christmas shopping tonight. Well, Greg will even sign it? I think I can And I'll give that. you some I'm credit, Jan, if you don't mind. <laughs> but I think I can handle that. That is going to be something my dad... Because he travels... When I looked at your map, I looked at all the places that both Valley and St. Vincent schools play in their district. And it's like Potosi, Arcadia Valley, all of these places that I've traveled for other reasons, but it's mm -hmm. like to have the history of what's really happening years ago there, that was pretty exciting to see that. I might say as a native Missourian also, um, it, it takes a while after you get out and about and see other parts of the country to realize um, again, you've got to like the Civil War, you've got to appreciate the Civil right. War. I think this <coughs> day and time, it's all the more important that we really do yeah. understand it. Uh, but the thought that as a child or a young person that you could be out walking on battlefields, some of them that are recognized like Pile of Nob, but some of them that are right. just farm fields, that we can do that and people, frankly, in Illinois, you can't do that. People in Iowa can't do that. People, in the, you can go right down the list. No one has battlefields from the Civil War uh, further north than Missouri does, and yet we don't use it to uh, benefit our uh, 
tourism revenue. So Greg, I'm just a healthcare worker and I've traveled all those areas seeing patients. Yeah. You know, I'm just doing my job. I don't even know where I'm traveling upon, you know. I know my dad is, as the older I think we get, the more we're interested in the history of our own family and also the land that we travel upon. And so I think that it's, it adds a little richness to our life to know what was before us, you know. And even, you know, if we look at even the Museum Learning Center, we're going to look not at just the most recent history, which is in our century, but what happens under the ground and what are we seeing that have gone back maybe hundreds of thousands and millions of years. I think that's what I'm most excited about with this museum is that it's going to cover a wide array of years that is a history below our feet. So, I mean, that's exciting. I mean, I really think it's fun to hear the Civil War history, and then we go beyond that, and we look at history beyond that, really. Hey, so. Greg, if, when I was running through the book, maybe I'm different than most people, but I started reading at the front of the book, and you referenced something, and I went back to a page three quarters through the book to read about that particular item, and I was all over the book, but I could always reference back to the point that I started at. So it was very interesting to see the stories you were telling and how they interacted, and uh, how the people uh, in the Civil War were very mobile. Oh, mm -hmm. and they, mm -hmm. they were very mobile. They would fight in, say, uh, in Pilot Knob and show up in Kansas City and have a battle, <laughs> yeah, right. which was unbelievable because yeah. there was no... They walked. Yeah, they walked or took horses, but they did it in a very... They moved it at a pace that nobody thought they could do at that time. Mm -hmm. Is that fair? Oh, say? yes, yes, and, and it's... Um, um, well, of course, ages ago, uh, things were very, very different, mm -hmm. although the cause of conflict, the result of conflict, has is, is always been the same. Uh, but when you look, it gets hard to call them accomplishments, but um, when you look at what, a society, what happens to a society when essentially all of the law and order is gone, uh, that's what happened in Missouri. And it's, I've often said, frankly, that uh, the only real civil war that occurred in the 1860s was, was the one that was in Missouri, because it literally was brother against brother. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it's a little bit more difficult one to per, to get across in the great battles of Virginia, but yet I think the lessons of what happened in Missouri are the ones that are more important today. That's interesting. Mm -hmm. So again, Jan, we've got that available in our gift shop mm -hmm. for Christmas shopping. People are welcome to come in. Uh, Greg has supplied us with a, a good supply of them. Greg, what else did you bring there? That's the map. Is that a... Yeah, I don't know if you want to get this. Have somebody back behind him. Oh, he's coming. He'll just give it a little bit of time. Right. He'll show it off. There you <laughs> go. The U.S. Grant out. Trail, Missouri. Okay, and this is the, the lead of it. This is the outside of it. Um, <clears throat> back in uh, 2006, uh, with the help of the Missouri Humanities Council, uh, our organization uh, began to produce uh, interpretive panels and then maps of uh, two trails. Now, uh, I told you I was trained as a lawyer, and one thing lawyers do is they copy what other people do, and they have no consequence for doing that. You know, we, no we've more, arranged that. No more comment on my side can be made. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the original concept was copied from what the state of Virginia or the Commonwealth of Virginia did starting in the early 1990s, where they went full bore on their tourism um, uh, uh, promotion for this, their Civil War battles, and they did trails all over the state of Virginia. Uh, this particular map is southeast Missouri. It does include St. Genevieve, and this was put out in um, 2012. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sorry, it's 2014, but it now has three different segments so that a traveler can go from Hannibal, Missouri to New Madrid 
and can go to Paducah and have uh, be told along the way what happened. And again, it may be hard to see it on the thing with that full map, but it also has on the back what we call official trail sites. Mm -hmm. uh, and these will be available too. I'll make them available to the museum um, in some quantity. Um, but um, uh, this is, I, I suppose, the uh, crowning achievement, we think, of Missouri Civil War Heritage Foundation. And we are working now to try to get an Illinois segment and uh, to try to get a uh, full Kentucky segment, in which case I'm probably ready to quit. <laughs> but we will then be able to let people track uh, the Lucy's Grant's Civil War career all the way from the point where he marched off from Springfield, Illinois with his first regiment until he won the great battle of Fort Donaldson, Tennessee. So I just, I, I feel pretty um, grateful right now of all the work that you've done. And I'm wondering if there's anyone else that is really doing this work that you have done that extensive research on the Civil War history. Are you an icon? No, 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 no. Kind no, of. No, Your wife is saying yes, you are. No, no, she's. Yes, she is. No. Yeah. So I mean, this is the place to go to get this history, right? Well, again, let me let me credit where credit is due. The Missouri Humanities Council. Right. I am a uh, heritage resources coordinator with them. Uh, they got involved in this uh, with the map before this one, the one in Northeast Missouri. And uh, yes, they are interested in heritage tourism. Mm -hmm. I'm interested in heritage tourism. St. Genevieve, obviously, is interested sure. in heritage tourism. And, and let me say, yes, th there was a huge outpouring over the 150th anniversary at sesquicentennial mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, of scholars and writings and everything else. But we, I guess I'd say, feel fortunate that we chose as the theme of the Eastern Missouri Civil War trails, a man who is now becoming, mm -hmm. well, I shouldn't say become, he's been famous to a lot of people, but there have been two major biographies written on Ulysses Grant in the last two years, and the most recent one is uh, Ron Chernow's mm -hmm. uh, so. uh, biography that just came out a few weeks ago. Uh, he's, of course, the guy who uh, uh, wrote the biography of Hamilton that turned into a Broadway play. Bob, I'm authorized to offer you a, a, a place in this Ulysses Grant um, uh, musical on Broadway, so long as you I know can't how to see how I dance. could miss on that. Uh, I, I, I would I'd be. like to go to Hamilton. You can, I'll take his spot. If it's going to be sure. Grant, it's going to be called Grant, and we're all going to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> that may be the downfall right there, Debbie. Yeah. I, 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 I can sing and dance, so I'll do something. I'll be, uh, what's your name? Do you know the Julia? Julia. I'll be Julia, oh, his yeah. wife. <laughs> but that's, uh, that is great. I, I, and I think when we're talking about Christmas gifts, is there a better Christmas gift than that book? For most people, even if you're not a historian buff uh, on the Civil War, to sit down with that book, you could spend hours. Mm -hmm. And for anybody, I mean, it's like you said, Jen, everything in there is about a place <laughs> That's you've been. That's for my dad. I'm oh. telling you, I'm, sell I'm buying it tonight. I don't I know, know that uh, we only have one hour, but I will tell you this. When Jan goes home tonight and Russ says, where'd the money go? And she <laughs> says she was robbed. I want this on tape to know that she spent all of it right here yes, it, on Christmas gifts. She's getting back. She's be, getting uh, back. Documented, yes. Yeah. He gave me full permission to just do the Christmas shopping this year. He said, if you need my help, let me know. I'm like, I don't need your help. It's all coming to me. Yeah. Well, we, we got 10 minutes left. Okay. Why don't we go through the rest of the things that we have at the... Uh, Gosh, okay. So At, at the uh, first sale so people know what kind of Christmas gifts. In addition to these two, and thank you both for coming in. Fantastic, oh we goodness. really appreciate it. And my pleasure. I yes. know that you drove from St. Louis, Larry. I appreciate you spending your time with us. But in addition to that, Jan. So Bob, you've got some other items that you wanna talk about. Um, 
some pewter items? Oh, some... yes. We have a pewter, and I'll read this. Uh, Tom and Patricia Hooper could not be here tonight, but they own and operate the ASL Pewter, and they make 100% lead-free pewter products. They've been working with pewter for over 20 years mm -hmm. now and have received much recognition for their work. In creating their products, they utilize a variety of techniques, including casting, metal spinning, soldering, and hammering. And they have the pewter shop here in St. Genevieve. Mm -hmm. A couple of their more recent items for sale in our gift shop, one is the larger medallion of mm -hmm. St. Genevieve, mm -hmm. and the patron saint of Paris and our city's namesake. A beautiful piece can be purchased with a lanyard to wear around your neck or with a small clear stand to display in an upright position. A great piece. It's available in our gift shop from the uh, Hoopers. And amazingly, what they did when they found out that we were creating the uh, Learning Center is they developed that pewter, St. Genevieve piece of pewter, and offered it a medallion, and they give us a percentage of the sale to the museum off of everyone that sold, which is absolutely amazing. In addition to that, they had a solar eclipse coin that they developed mm -hmm. for the solar eclipse. They imprinted on both sides. That's a limited edition coin, and it was commissioned last summer for the solar event. There's only a few of those left. We still have some of those in our gift mm -hmm. shop at okay. the museum. And then finally, in 2018, ASL Pewter will be introducing a coin series that will be inspired by the museum and the Museum Learning Center. The first coin will actually be a rendition, as Larry did, of the museum building. Because again, we're very proud of that heritage. That museum has existed in that building for over 85 years. So that is uh, the first coin, but it's gonna be a set of coins or a series of coins, a collector's edition. Uh, the second coin will be a rendition of the famous Ketting Building sign, mm -hmm. which is what you were talking about, Larry. The sign itself is a story and a piece of history for St. Genevieve. Uh, the third coin will be a rendition of the new, mu new Museum Learning Center, and then there'll be a series of them and you can buy each one as they come out. So they have been very active about helping us at the museum mm -hmm. and quality stuff. And if you read through uh, some of their accomplishments, they're known worldwide for their pewter. And they have a shop right here in St. Genevieve that you can go in and watch them make the items right there. That's nice. So you think that there's a potential that we would have all three coins in a set eventually? Actually, I think it's going to be a series of six coins. Oh, really? And they will have a collector's box mm -hmm. that each time you get one of them, you sit it in there. Okay. And then eventually you'll have the entire collection. And it'll be a limited edition, so there'll be a collector's edition of those coins. And I'm sure that eventually we will have some of the Indians that we were friends with in St. Genevieve mm -hmm. when St. Genevieve mm -hmm. was settled. So Bob, I have a, a few notes here about future gift store items. If we want to talk about those, the puzzle makers and maybe um, some clothing items that we hope to bring into the museum center. We actually have some of the clothing items in the okay. museum now for sale. We have a St. Genevieve t-shirt. Uh, so there's two different versions of that St. Genevieve t-shirt and they're available in our gift shop right now. Okay. Uh, and in multiple colors. Uh, the new Offenberg DVD oh, sure. is available in our gift shop and we have went back to Germany and ordered that DVD back in uh, an amazing DVD and it tells a great story with the locals in that story mm -hmm. uh, so, some of that DVD is in German they're talking German oh, wow. and I catch pieces of it because I grew up with my grandparents talking German but most of what they said in German, I got my face slapped if I repeated it. So I thought it was a bad language. But, uh, I think I got some of that. Yeah. Actually. But that, say, uh, that new Offenberg DVD is available in our gift shop, Jan. Mm -hmm. And we had to go to Germany, order it back in from Germany, and we sold out of the first order, and we have a second order coming in. Makes a fantastic gift because... A lot of the people that are in that DVD lived in New Offenburg mm -hmm. or Zell, mm -hmm. 
and uh, you know you watch the DVD you know the people and you can listen to them talk and it's really interesting uh, in addition to that uh, we have some Missouri uh, Ant uh, replicate Antoine O'Neill jewelry that's available in the uh, gift shop. I'd like to tell you a little bit about that, but I'm not really up on jewelry, so uh, maybe Linda will get one of those items for Christmas. Uh, if you can get a discount. Yes, absolutely. I, you or might I have the Jan, best shot. Yeah. If I have Jan buy it for me this evening with Russ's money is what I'm thinking. Hey, let's see. I've got a purse full of it. Yeah. Right okay. Uh, in addition to that, we had a gentleman over in Kansas City that donated 260 train magazines. And they're the train magazine, that's the name on it, is Train Magazine. Mm -hmm. And they date from 1944 through 1984, I believe. And they're all in plastic sleeves in mint mm -hmm. condition. And he's donated those to our museum to sell in the museum. So anybody that has uh, a family member that is into trains or worked mm -hmm. on the trains, which there's a lot of that in St. Genevieve, mm -hmm. would be welcome to come down and look at those. They're available for sale down there. And finally, we have some uh, wind spinners. They're, they're, they're called uh, Spinfinity, mm -hmm. and they're a kind of intriguing, a little bit different item, but a, a very intriguing to look at. So all of those items are already in our gift shop and available for shoppers if they want to come into the gift shop. Yeah, those Spinfinities were an eye catcher when we were at the uh, Christmas walk this weekend. People just saw them in the window and they just catch the light and they, if you like a theme around mm, politics or, I don't know, birds, sun, they just have different items that they are showing off and it just kind of spins in the wind, but it catches the light and it makes it more of a kaleidoscope or yeah. a... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's as really it spins, of, yeah. it brings that center and it, back. It also bounces off against a window and you almost feel like you're in a dance <laughs> show or something. It just has a lot of movement. Anyway, it does catch a lot of light and it, it is fun. It's a fun item. How long were you in front of those? Jen? Oh, gosh, I was there for about an hour and a half and people came and went and I'm like, all of a sudden, one of my other uh, museum friends came in and said, do you see how it bounces off of the window? And I'm like, seeing all this action. They're pretty amazing. Yes. Um, but there were a lot of themes, um, natural themes and, you know, earthy themes and bird themes that you could go after. Right. So it's just kind of a, something you would put out maybe on your deck or something in your garden. Exactly. And right. Steph has become the, uh, she's the official uh, dealer mm -hmm. representative for those items. And anybody who would be interested in those items, I think she has like 40 of them opened up and in the museum to view. So those are for the non-historians that exactly. want to come in and look for a gift because they are fun and you don't have to pay the price to come into the museum to shop. If you just want to come in and shop, come look and see what we have. It all supports our efforts to take the museum a step forward. So I really appreciate you coming in and seeing what we have, um, enjoying what we have historically for sure, and to take advantage of the people that are sitting around the table, absolutely. But there are some other interesting gift items that are just fun, just basically fun. So don't uh, hesitate to come by. There's some by the way, I was at the Christmas walk this Saturday, enjoyed being around the dinosaurs and around the people and people coming from all over and just enjoying being out. It was a beautiful day, families, large families coming in, enjoying it. And, and then I just took off and shopped around St. Genevieve and got me a couple new items for the holidays. So that was kind of fun. I know we're getting close, Bob. You're telling me we have one minute left, but you know what? There is a lot of treasures in St. Genevieve. I invite you to come and enjoy what we have here. Enjoy what we have at the museum. And I, before I sign off, I want to thank both of you. Larry, thank you for coming and showing your birdhouses. And Greg, gosh, thank you for all that you've done to bring the history of Missouri 
in front of us and available to and us Debbie, to just enjoy. And, and Debbie, I know what a wife behind the big guy does yeah. all the time. Yeah. So uh -huh. you know what? You've he, given he a lot of your time. He did dedicate the book to me. Well, oh, that is That's for five years That's I sat great. and took notes for him. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you for all that you all the time that you gave him to do and all the time that you did to support him. But that well, history you, is really valuable to all of us. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank I think you. we're at the eight o'clock hour signing off. Merry Christmas. Hi, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas to everyone. Thanks. Thank you.